Oh, hey, welcome back. You made it. So this week, I wanted to read a nonfiction book. Another word for nonfiction is informational. And books that are informational, nonfiction, are found in the Dewey Decimal System section in a library. So all of the books that are categorized, put in order by numbers. Okay. This one is about science and the title is called Luna Moths by Arnold Quinn M. Really exciting because we are going to learn about Luna Moths together just by reading this informational book. Check out the cover. Look at that Luna Moth. Wow. Those must be some antlers on. Okay, I never, I never knew moths could have antlers. I wonder if they do anything for the moth. And look at those eyes. All right. Can't see the wings just yet, but moths do have wings. All right. Luna moths. Luna. Okay, we know the word moths. But what about the word Luna? Does anyone know what the word Luna means? It's actually the Spanish word for moon. All right, Luna means moon. The moon comes out at night. Hmm, what kind of moth are Luna moths? I'm going to predict that they are nocturnal because the moon does only come out at night. Okay. Ah, check out the wings. Nonfiction books consist of a table of contents. The table of contents is always found at the beginning of the book and it helps you jump to the page with a subject you are looking for. All right, so the table of contents is Nighttime Awakening, found on page four. Nocturnal Insects, found on page seven. Luna Moth Larva, found on, found on page 11. And so forth. At the end of nonfiction books, we can find the glossary, that's on page 22. So the table of contents helps us jump to the page we're looking for. And then the index, another important page we are looking for. The index is found, found on page 24. Okay, we'll jump to it now so that I could tell you what a glossary does for you and what an index does for you when you're doing a book report or any kind of report and you need to skim through the page really quickly to write about a certain section. Maybe you need to write about how they're nocturnal. So you just jump to that page. Maybe you don't know what nocturnal means. So a glossary is basically like a dictionary. It gives you the definition of all the words that are bolded throughout the book. So the words that we're going to find bolded throughout the book are cocoon, deciduous, molt, compound eyes, larva, and nocturnal. These words might be a little bit challenging and it helps us understand the book, understand about Luna moths better. Alright, glossary gives you the definition of the words bolded in the book. And page 24, the index, the very last page, you can find the index. And again, if you need to skim through and talk about the antennas, you can find it on page 7. Caterpillars, found on page 11, 12, and 14. Cocoons, found on page 14 and 16. The compound eyes, that's found on page 7. The dangers, found on page 8. The diet. What the Luna Moth Eats, found on page 11, 12, and 14, and so forth. All right, let's learn about Luna Moths.
The dark of night blankets a North American forest. It is past midnight. Two luna moths meet among the deciduous trees. The male has followed, has flown several miles in search of this female. He followed the scent she releases. Luna moths are nocturnal. Compound eyes help them see in the dark. Fuzzy antennas stick out of their heads. These are used for smelling. Males use their bushy antenna to find mates. Luna moths are insects. They have six pinkish legs and two pairs of wings. The moth's wide wings are green. They are covered with tiny soft scales. Each wing has a dark eye spot. A long, a long tail hangs from each hind wing. These tails flutter during flight. They sound like wing beats. This confuses bats that hunt luna moths. Adult luna moths do not eat. They do not even have mouth parts. As larvae, these creatures take the form of caterpillars. The small green caterpillars hatch from eggs. They eat a lot. Here it says mandibles. That must be the mouth. Luna moth caterpillars munch on tree leaves. They grow and molt. The time between each molt is called an instar. Luna moth caterpillars go through five instars. The first instar, they are six to eight millimeters long. Second, nine to ten millimeters. Third, thirteen to fifteen millimeters. Fourth, twenty-three millimeters. And the fifth, they are sixty-five millimeters long. A luna moth caterpillar eats and grows for about a month. Then, using silken bits of leaf, it spins a cocoon. There, the caterpillar will become a moth. Luna moths break out of cocoons in the morning. Their wings expand and dry during the day. The moths are able to fly by nightfall. Luna moths live for seven to ten days. Their only goal is to find mates. Life of a luna moth. Hatches. Caterpillar breaks out of egg. Molts. Eats leaves. Undergoes five instars. Putates. Spins a cocoon. It becomes an adult moth. Hatches. Breaks out of the cocoon as an adult. And the adult, about 4.5 inches long, reproduces. At dawn, the luna moths part ways. Each finds a resting spot hidden between green leaves. This evening, the female will begin to lay eggs. The male will search for a new mate. Here we have information on the tails, the body, the wings, and the antenna. And there we have it. We are to the back of the book, back to the glossary. There's more information on Luna Moss that they provided websites that you can look up. This is very helpful when you're doing a research project on luna moths. Okay. All right. And the index. On the back, read the entire series. So, we've learned that this book is a series and they provide information on other animals as well. I hope you enjoyed it.